that's an impossible act to follow. But truly, God has blessed us here on this morning. We give honor to our presiding bishop, to the board of bishops, and certainly to Bishop Hines, the chairman of this department, and to each of you, the men of God. We thank God for this opportunity to be before you for just a minute or two. I just simply say to you, come to the men's conference. Uh, as per usual, we're always out of time. We're always on a schedule. But I just simply want to say to you all very, very briefly that for those of you who are not pastors, those of you who do not have charge or responsibilities, for other people, your congregation. I just want to say to you, Proverbs 4 and 23, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it pour the issues of life. For those of you who are pastors, bishops, and have the responsibility for churches and other folks, I want to simply say to you, Proverbs 30 and 25, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in summer. What am I saying? I'm simply saying to you that in spite of how we jump, shout, and have a wonderful time, we still have the issue of sexual misconduct knocking on our door. We still have the possibility of being sued on a regular basis, simply because individuals are not guarding their hearts, simply because leaders are not preparing their meal in summer. Are you with me, somebody? I'm not trying to put a damper on what's going on before because we've been having a wonderful time. But it's hard to sing Zion songs when you're in the center of controversy. We need to understand that there's a distinct difference between verdict, judgment, and settlement. The Church of God in Christ has been so blessed in that we have not had a major verdict. We have not had a major judgment. In fact, we haven't had any. But we have had to settle cases. What you hear oftentimes is the fact that we have spent a million dollars or $800,000 or $900,000 during the course of a year. And many of you look at the presiding bishop and look at the general board and say, what in the world are they possibly doing? You hear all kinds of rumors and innuendos about our inability to protect our church. All it takes, my brothers, is one case. One case. What you don't hear is that the dollar amounts that we have to expend is just simply a result of settlements as opposed to the liability and the exposure. If you're being sued for $50 million and you have an opportunity to settle a $50 million case for $100,000, what is your choice going to be? You have a $10 million exposure and you have an opportunity to settle it for $150,000. Do the math. Are you with me? But I say to each of you, come see us in the men's conference so that we can share with you policies and procedures that you must implement. Must implement. You must be able to answer that all essential question that is oftentimes posed during trial. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Pastor, Mr. Church Leader, what did you do to prevent this horrible tragedy from occurring? Trust me, your response can't be, well, that's my buddy. That was my friend. Well, I thought that he said that 
he had changed. He had been regenerated. And the fact that he had just gotten out of prison after his third conviction for child molestation, and you thought he was all right, those responses are not sufficient. Presiding Bishop wants to help you help this church. Do I need to say that again? The presiding bishop wants you to help this church. And he wants to help you to do that. We want to have programs that you attend so that we discuss the issues that you can do the bit of preventive maintenance. You must fix it before it gets broken. Again, guard your hearts, prepare your meals in summer. Come see us in the men's conference so that we can give you some specifics. God bless you.